Everyone wants to take their business, their skills, to the next level. Small and mid-sized business owners have exceptional insight into how to do this. They endure and thrive because they find ways to overcome the challenges that come their way, and they can teach us valuable lessons to apply to our own companies and lives. Stephen Nooner, founder and owner of Alkali, a company with a unique process that helps businesses more effectively buy and manage their insurance programs. And Bob Gibbons, builder of Riata Commercial Realty, a real estate advisor and tenant advocate, are two prominent Metroplex businessmen who, along with their weekly guests, will ask their and your probing questions, finding impactful solutions that will help you reach for the next level. Here are your hosts, Stephen Nooner and Bob Gibbons. Welcome to the next level, conversations that propel business. I'm your host, Stephen Nooner. And I'm your other host, Bob Gibbons. And we've got a great show for you. I'm really excited to introduce my friend, Adnan Patel. Adnan is the Managing Director of Six Red, an organization that specializes in helping companies select, develop, manage, and enhance their return on investment for end-to-end business solutions, such as NetSuite, Salesforce, and others. They employ 25 people, and they've been in business 13 years. Um, I'd like to welcome Adnan. Welcome. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Bob. Happy to be here. And if you want to find Adnan online, he's at sixred.com. And that's (laughs) S-I-X. Not the number six, S-I-X. You are so bad at URLs. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Websites. Okay, well, that's what's okay. That, what's the internet? Mm-hmm. What's the internet, it's right? that thing Al Gore created, There are right? a bunch of ones and zeros, yes. but we're not going to go there today. Hey, we like to start off every show, Adnan, with uh, wisdom from others. And uh, before we get into the wisdom of you, we, we do that. And by the way, you're a next leveler. Anybody that's a guest with us, we call them our next leveler. So you're our next leveler of the day. Thank but you. the wisdom from others, we're going to be giving using a quote that you actually provided us from Confucius, which mm-hmm. was, says, we have two lives and the second begins when we realize we only have one. I like that quote, but what does that mean to you? Um, you know, it's, it's uh, something that, you know, you don't think about, right? Um, you kind of go grow up, go to high school, go to college, and you're just running at full pace and thinking, you know, the world is out in front of you and you're just at it. And when I heard this quote, you know, I actually realized that in my 30s, I've just been living like there's, you know, no end, you know, um, and <laughs> and um, maybe we should talk about that more. Yeah. <laughs> what exactly does that mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And then, you know, I, I it made me realize that, you know, I've been doing a lot of things for myself. Right. It was just kind of, you know, go and blow. Mm-hmm. Um, and. I, I needed to slow down. I needed to kind of take a look at what was important to me at the end of the day, you know, trying to start a business, grow a business um, and a family um, all was kind of just going down uh, a very fast pace. And it made me think that I need to kind of reprioritize certain things sometimes. And that's why this is kind of stuck with me that, you know, you, you think I've got all the time in the world, but then you realize you, you really don't and you need to focus on uh, things that are important to you. Right. Yeah, I know growing up, it seems like we're always doing something to get to the next place, whether mm-hmm. that's the next school level. to the next level. Yes. What a plug there. <laughs> I like the way you integrated that. But we're always looking to the next thing. And as soon as I do this, then I'll get to that. And as soon as, you know, and you do that with kids. Yeah. Oh, when the kid's great. I mean, as soon as they can walk, life will be great. As soon mm-hmm. as they can talk, as soon as, you know, the next thing you know, they're gone. Yeah, yeah. So it seems like we're always living our lives for the next thing. And when does that ultimately finish and you get to live life life is in the moments bob i know yeah yeah and so it's just you know kind of reminds me that you need to kind of remember that you have one shot at this and you want to focus on things that ultimately matter and make a positive impact and not just kind of <laughs> what, whatever you feel like one of my personal mentors he mm-hmm. uh, he's an older gentleman and his name's alan and, and one of the things i you know whenever you ask him how he's doing um a lot of his friends are passing away mm-hmm. and you know he's like any day i can get up on my hind two legs is a good day you know <laughs> <laughs> hind two legs yeah <laughs> <laughs> any day above the dirt yeah. yeah so i mean it's it's that it's amazing how the perspective and, mm-hmm. and the sooner we can realize that um to me, the better life gets. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate life a lot more now, even though I thought I had before. So tell us something that maybe not everyone knows about you. 
Um, so, you know, I grew up in the Middle East, spent some time in the Middle East, and um, all you see or hear about are deserts and hidden cities, and, and uh, Indiana Jones was really popular growing up. So I developed this closet fascination with archaeology, uh, right? Um, I feel a nickname coming on, <laughs> Dr. Jones. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I, I just, I, I love archaeology. Um, I'm fascinated how civilizations you know, grew and expanded and uh, were able to achieve a lot of great technology or technological advances without what I feel we have access to, right? Mm -hmm. um, building buildings and canals and sewage systems and everything we take for granted was meticulously planned out. So I love archaeology. Not a lot of people know that because I don't actually share that with a lot of people. It's just kind of my own do you, have research. you ever been on a dig? No, I haven't. You know, um, we tried to go dig some... Uh, uh, dinosaur fossils out in, in uh, out here outside of Texas, yeah. um, but that was the closest I've come. <laughs> wow, my son spent a summer, uh, a month up in Wyoming oh, wow. doing a dinosaur dig as for college credit. Yeah. He absolutely hated it. Really? <laughs> it was like the worst it, it, summer of his life. Well, yeah, I mean, you look at you know some of the pictures and you know articles that I read, you know, and everything is just perfectly dug up and with a little brush and you know a little uh, knife in a huge, huge area, and. You know, it doesn't um, uh, miss me that somebody sat there for hours, oh, you know, peeling yeah. this away. And then that can't be fun. That's you know? the, the, the speed or the pace of that, I think, yeah. would drive me crazy. But uh, speaking of speed and pace, let's mm -hmm. switch a little bit and talk about Six Red. So tell, tell us about Six Red and who you guys serve specifically. Sure. So um, Six Red is a consulting company focused on helping small and mid-sized companies run their businesses more profitably, right? So how do you do that? Um, you have to have better processes uh, in your business that allow you to monitor and scale your business. And we enable that with technology. So we provide on-demand software. And on-demand software is is um, different from what we're used to, where you would buy some software, you would install it on hardware that you purchase, and you'd right. have a server room right in your office, and you'd have an expensive IT person come you know, once or twice <laughs> right. or every day to make sure it's up. So on-demand is basically you know, software that's been optimized um, for businesses that is hosted somewhere else. And you subscribe to it, just like your online bank, right? Mm -hmm. You log into your bank, you transact on online, everything is secure. You're not worried about, you know, um, you're not worried about the servers being up or things, you know, um, going down. It's just like that. And so the on-demand software frees up uh, a lot of companies uh, to focus on building a better product, providing a better service, as opposed to dedicating a big portion of their annual budget to IT and systems. But both are critical, right? Got to have great processes supported by great technology mm -hmm. so you can run a business efficiently. And that's really what we specialize in. So tell us about the name, Six Red. That's not intuitively obvious. Right. So um, when my partners and I um, were thinking about starting uh, the company, we, we knew we'd have to come up with a name. And ev everything that was important to us back in 2003 um, was already taken from a dot-com perspective. And it was imperative that we had a dot-com, right? So we started to think about different um, different experiences that we've had, right? And what has you know, some resonance with all of us. And one of my uh, co-founders, um, you know, said, you know, he always bet, bet on red, you know, in Vegas. And um, he made a lot of money uh, for him, you know, <laughs> winning as opposed to losing. So he wanted to have um, a great um, story behind the name. And so we said, you know, that would be really good, you know, that you always had good luck betting on something and starting a business is, is a bet. It's sure. a big gamble sure. uh, in, in what you're going to do. So we took that and we worked with our marketing person and came up with our, our logo, which had six points and, you know, working together, collaborating through it, we came up with the name, you know, six red and it was available as a dot com. So we, cool. <laughs> so we jumped on it. So what I'm really fascinated about your business and what you guys do is, um, I'm not a technology person per se, but I'm fascinated by it. And I've seen the benefits within our business of how it can level the playing field between huge companies, mm -hmm. right? I mean, not everyone had the access mm -hmm. 
to had the resources to buy and deploy software and have that software guy around. And now it seems like more and more it's accessible for smaller and smaller businesses. So share a little bit about that. I mean, what's happening there? Um, that's exactly right. So, you know, we've got, we've had some really forward thinking, um, technology people out there who've worked for the large enterprise software companies. Right. Um, and you know, said, you know, there's a better way to deploy this and there's, um, a bigger market out there for this type of, um, software than we can reach, right? Most businesses don't have hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to invest just in an, an accounting system or an ERP <laughs> system, right? Um, they have a business to run. What's ERP? So ERP stands for enterprise resource planning, right? Okay. So it's a system that allows companies to manage their, their supply chain, their inventory and okay. things like that more efficiently. But <clears throat> it used to be just for large companies and you did small companies did with you know, um, substandard software or Excel, <laughs> yeah. Excel, right? Hey, Ex don't knock Excel. <laughs> no. And I'm telling you, we've, we have, you know, companies who do hundreds of millions of dollars a year in business and they still have Excel for some of their, you know, key, uh, reporting and key processes. But <clears throat> the idea was let's level the playing field. Let's bring out, you know, enterprise software, right. But deliver it in a fashion where the, the cost of ownership is shared amongst many, many businesses, right? So build data centers, have servers, you know, install technology that allows you to have your own secure area within that. And it's really what Amazon has made, you know, their business off of. Amazon built this huge server farm, right, to help with their own capacity during busy season. So from in Q4, they needed a lot of technology um, and horsepower to run all their orders. And they realized that the majority of the year they didn't need that. So what do they do with it? Well, let's, let's say let's lease it out to other people. And it's kind of the same idea, but you get enterprise quality functionality um, at a price that oh, you're gonna use. And so w where do you guys um, come into this? So why not just call those companies directly? What do you guys do specifically that, that adds the value there? So, you know, selecting software to run your business is a very important step right and you can definitely go out and do your own evaluation but what you're faced with is seeing is marketing material from different companies right sure. and they're only going to put their best foot forward so the reason why we actually move from enterprise consulting to small and mid-sized businesses is because we knew that it could have a much bigger impact on their business on the profitability of that business so it's very important that they make a good decision so you know, our value here is to guide companies through their challenges and solve business problems first, mm -hmm. understand what their challenges are, and then bring technology to it as opposed to just going through websites and figuring out fit and feature and, you know, being wowed by some marketing videos. Sold. So, so how are you different than your competitors? So um, a lot of our competitors are um, going up the chain, right? So they're, they've been working with QuickBooks, they've been working with small applications, and now they're trying to, you know, sell to companies enterprise level software. Uh, and for that reason, right, they don't get a lot of the nuances that come with implementing a, a, a system for an entire business. They may be just focused on accounting, but for us, right, we look at the whole business and we're coming from an enterprise background. And so we're kind of moving to a mid-market section. So bringing that enterprise experience is really our differentiator. Okay. All right, well, we're gonna go to a break. Technology makes business impersonal, right? Adnan's experience share may change your perspective. Stick around. And now, Confessions of a Recovering Landlord. This is Bob Gibbons with Riata Commercial Realty, and I am your recovering landlord. After 20 years as a landlord, I now use that experience only for the benefit of companies that lease or buy office buildings and warehouses. Today's confession, knowledge is power. We all negotiate from a position of power and strength, or at least we want to. In any negotiation, the party with the most knowledge probably has the upper hand. And landlords count on this being the case whenever uh, you're negotiating a lease because most landlords are professional real estate investors and they hire professional leasing agents and property managers. Landlords are in the market every day negotiating leases while tenants probably only negotiate one, maybe two leases every few years. So tenants feel outgunned. Don't let landlords have all the power. As a former landlord for 20 years, I understand how landlords think and what motivates them. So let me put that knowledge and experience to work on your side of the negotiation. To learn more, 
Contact me at texastenantrep.com. Again, that's texastenantrep.com. Have you started making plans to take your business to the next level in 2016? Hi, I'm Stephen Nooner, founder and CEO of Alkali. We have a trademark process called the Empowered Advantage that enables CEOs, business owners, and entrepreneurs to more effectively buy and manage their insurance. Before sitting down to make your plans for the new year, here are just a few things to consider. Would you say that you have an actual insurance strategy, one that you can articulate, or have you just purchased a policy here and there over the years? If you have an insurance strategy, was it discussed under the pressure of a renewal deadline or considered earlier in the year to avoid fire drill decision making? If your answer was no to either of these questions, then you may not have the right partner on your team. Visit AlkaliServices.com to contact us and take the next step to a bigger and better future. Hi, uh, this is Mark Sinatra, CEO of Staff One HR. Um, I just survived the Steve and Bob show. Had a great time, but I tell you, as managing an HR company, I'm coming back tomorrow. These guys really need some training, conflict management, personality training. I'm coming back. See you guys. Thanks. Welcome back to the next level. We're here with our guest, Adnan Patel of Six Red, and you can find out more about him at sixred.com. It's S I X, Bob. And it's R E D, not R E A D, Stephen. I didn't say read, I said red. <laughs> red. Well, but you may have read something, right? Oh, I got you. You're so. S I X R E D.com. All right. And then I wanted to ask you about what is one of the biggest challenges you face in your, in, in your business? Um, you know, going back to what differentiates Six Red from our competitors, right, is the way I, we approach our clients and prospects. And because we're a technology company and, and consultants, we have to focus on the business problems first, right, which doesn't seem intuitive, right, but that's really our approach. And so the biggest challenge is finding individuals who understand business, understand business problems, and understand how technology can solve those problems, as opposed to coming up with technology solutions and then forcing businesses to comply. Um, you know, it's often the, uh, the formula for disaster, uh, an unhappy customer. So getting people who come out of college or come from, you know, industry who have a good understanding how businesses operate, which I didn't do, know before I started a business, right? right. I thought I did. But <laughs> I think that, to me, is our biggest challenge to, to propel, is having people who have business acumen as well as a technology understanding to be great advisors. Which one is more challenging for you? Um, believe it or not, it's the business side of it, right? I mean, we're growing up in an era where a lot of people are familiar with technology. They're They're tech savvy. They oftentimes know a lot more about technology than, than I do. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't have the business understanding. They don't know how companies make money and some of the challenges they face and where there's opportunity to um, alleviate, you know, some of these challenges through automation. And that's our biggest challenge. Um, yeah, it's, it's not so important to know how something works unless you know why it works and how you're going to apply it to something yeah. that matters. And I didn't know before, you know, we've known each other mm -hmm. a while now. And but before, you know, today and preparing mm -hmm. for this, I realized how similar our businesses mm -hmm. are in a lot of ways. I mean, insurance is the same way. There's a ton of product pushers. Mm -hmm. But unless you have kind of the why and like have some strategy that what are you actually trying to solve? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm shocked all the time that the pe things people are spending big bucks on mm -hmm. where it has no value to their employees. It's, you know, it's just, it's, it's waste. And, and I can imagine the same thing. It's like you could just buy a solution because you think you, and then you're not even solving whatever the underlying problem is. Yeah. I mean, and, and I agree that's, um, you know, a lot of people will go out and say, you know what, if you buy this particular solution or software, right, it'll f solve this problem. <laughs> All right. And it might solve that problem, but that may not, uh, be the complete solution you're you're looking for. So, what's one of the scariest risks in your business? Um, so, one of the biggest risks we took um, after we started the company, um, we were um, very proud of ourselves. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, we got a cool dot com name. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, great logo and uh, and the dot com. So we're set. But you know, a lot of it, um, we were we were very. Um, excited about what we were doing. We were looking for other opportunities. And we saw that there was an opportunity to build software, um, software utility applications that uh, went on top of the enterprise software that we were implementing. And 
it was something that the, the, the company wasn't offering. It was something that our customers wanted. There was a market for it. And we identified three areas that we could build software for. And, you know, we, we brought on a partner uh, who was a developer, right? Um, really smart, really brilliant uh, developer to help build out these products. And what we didn't do is we, we, we didn't focus on... Um, the risk side of building software, right? We invested a lot of money uh, in the sales and marketing of it and left the development to essentially one individual, right? Mm -hmm. Who held the keys to everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we didn't have things go the right way, right? Um, that developer just bailed on us. And so we were left with code that was not supported, that clients actually had. And, um, you know, we were at a big, risk, right? We, we had exposed ourselves. Um, and that was a huge mistake, right? Not understanding that, you know, even though we're friends, even though people are talented and bring a lot to the table, mm -hmm. um, ultimately the, the health of the business and the exposure to risk that a business has, has to be looked at independently of all those things. And fortunately, we... <clears throat> had a you know really great you know and talented people on the team that were able to get us out of the situation um, but it caused a lot of grief a lot of anxiety mm -hmm. you know imagine you know we're selling software to enterprise companies and it's like well we don't know what the code is or where it is and <laughs> the, the, the main developer just left with it you know wow. they say the only ship that doesn't sail is a partnership yeah yeah, yeah. it's a tough one it is if you had to change one thing about the way your business is running right now what would it be um, you know, right now we're a very flat organization. Um, you know, a lot of people are focused in a lot of different areas and we realized, um, that in order to scale the business, in order to take it to the next level, right, we've got to change the organization. So we're looking to, you know, hire and bring on leaders in key areas that they're solely responsible for, right? Um, there's still collaboration across, you know, client delivery, but, you know, focusing on account management, you know, which is different from client support and success, which is different for from projects, right, is where we need to go. Right. And that organizational change um, is what we're needing to do. And that requires delegating now. Right. Um, having people in the business um, who have great rapport with our clients and we take our client, you know, relationships very seriously and, and very personally for me. Um, it's it's hard to let go. And so bringing about that organizational sh change uh, without losing that, you know, personal relationship that we've built and cultivated is is my is my goal for this year. Okay. So let me ask you a question because the two stories you just told may appear to some to be in conflict. Cause on the one hand you had the developer, you had all your eggs in one basket with one developer and now you're getting ready to mm -hmm. delegate so mm -hmm. you can scale the organization. So how do you scale the organization and give people responsibility and authority but without subjecting yourself to that same problem that you have with the developer? So, um, the, it's a great question, right? And the difference here, right, is that we've got an organization now that just needs to be organized a little bit better, right? Uh, and we're not saying that you're only responsible for this key task, right? Um, we're saying that you're going to be specialized in an area and we're going to have redundancy, right? Okay. So before we had one person, right, you know, <laughs> and now we have several people, you know, who can take over, you know, have the same skill set, are aware of what's going on, right? So you know, one plus one is two, you know, and that's really the methodology that we're looking for, you know, it is to build up an organization where you're not the, you know, the, the, the key, um, to the solution, right? You're part of the solution and you just have more responsibility for that delivery as opposed to knowing everything about it. Do you expect that to come from within or are you looking outside the organization for that type of leadership? Um, so for some areas we have, you know, identify leaderships within leaders within the organization. So, you know, they will be more specialized as opposed to wearing multiple hats. Um, and then for other areas, we are looking, you know, outside uh, the organization to recruit talented and excited people who want to take that leadership position. Talented and excited. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have, uh, I think you said you have 25 employees, but mm -hmm. you're also national and are you even international? Yeah, yeah. So we have 25 people um, that service the the clients in the United States. And then we have an office in Hyderabad, India, where we've got a whole nother, 
you know, team of people, um, about 35 people who are providing back end, you know, um, data migration, integration, kind of the real hardcore development stuff. Um, and so those guys um, are very well organized because it's easier to organize delivery teams than it is client management teams, right? Mm-hmm. Which is what we're, we're focused on now. So let's get personal a little bit. Um, if you look back over the last 12 months, what would you say um, would be the, your biggest accomplishment, your biggest high? <clears throat> Um, so last year, um, after years and years of, of planning and anticipation, we were, um, I was able to take my, my wife, Victoria, and three kids to Southeast Asia. Um, it was uh, one of my proudest and most exciting moments, wow, right? Yeah. That's a very cool trip. Three yeah. weeks. How yeah. many kids? Uh, three kids. So What ages? Um, at the time, 12, 10, and 5. Oh, nice. Right? So we were waiting for my youngest, Zoe, to to be old enough to kind of drag her own suitcase. <laughs> um, no naps. <laughs> and no naps. And you know what? She was the best travel companion. I mean, everything was exciting to her. Everything. She was in awe of everything from the time we sat down in the plane and they brought her her food on a tray to, you know, landing somewhere and seeing, you know, completely different, you know, landscape. It, it, everything was inspiring to her. And, and that to me um, was the highest high in the past 12 months, right, is being able to share that with my children, um, to take them, you know, somewhere um, that's really rich culturally, right? The people are very happy and excited, um, but they live in very simple terms, right? Where all do you go? Um, so we spent a week in South Korea, um, where my best friend lives, and so it was easy for us to to go there and and uh, visit there. And we spent a week in Singapore uh, and a week in Thailand, right? So <clears throat> those three countries are very different, um, you know, economically and culturally. Sure. And you know, some of the the markets that we went to in each one of those countries, right, had a common denominator, right? It was a small entrepreneur, you know, selling some you know, goods, you know, whether it was fresh produce or very simple, very simple. Right. And, you know, my, my, my daughter asked, you know, um, why aren't, why aren't, you know, these kids, uh, in school. Right. Um, mm-hmm. and cause they were helping their family out, right. Putting stuff in bags, you know, taking, you know, money and getting change. Right. And <clears throat> very simple businesses. Right. And the kids were helping their family out to make a living. And um, I also then realized that it was summertime, so they were probably just helping their family, <laughs> uh, you know, c- coming to the office in the summertime, right? Yeah. Um, but it showed, you know, a Business family working business. together, you know, a family working together and and being happy, you know, with the humble, you know, um, things that they had to offer and the business that they ran. And I wanted my kids to see that because we live a very privileged life here oh, in the yeah. West. You know, we have food food security, water security, all sorts of things that just are our basic needs we take for granted where, you know, we saw that that was not so easy. So what's next for you? Um, so I want to kind of build on that. Um, you know, I, my, um, my eldest daughter, Layla, she's 13 now. And, um, you know, she, I think has a very, um, uh, soft heart, you know, for, for, for those kids and Mm -hmm. and some of the things that we saw. So we're going to start looking at, or we've started looking at programs where we can go and, you know, get involved in communities, um, both here, you know, in the U S and Texas, and then abroad where we can make an impact. So she's still kind of young for some of that, but we've already figured out a few things that we want to do together as a family and, and use our time there. Outstanding. Well, thank you so much for being our guest today. Thank you. Anand Patel has been our guest. He's the CEO of SixRed.com. You can find out more at SixRed.com, spelled out, (laughs) S-I-X-R-E-D. And if you'd like to know more about the show, please go to NextLevelShow.com. And uh, you can see who has been our guest in the past, who's coming up in the future. And you can, of course, do all the social media stuff. If you hear something or heard something today and you know someone would benefit by hearing about Adnan or SixRed, please... uh, just help spread the word. See you next week. Thanks. Thank you. You have been listening to The Next Level, conversations that propel business with Stephen Nooner and Bob Gibbons. Join us every Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. for more prolific conversations that will take your business to the next level.